Hello and thank you for watching my video. As always, please like and subscribe. And if you have some comments of what you liked or what you would like me to cover, please add them in the comments. Today I'm going to be going over using the API feature to grab all the subnet scopes from a Windows server and push them into PHP IPAM. In a second video, I will be going, I will be grabbing the leases and adding those to PHP IPAM as well. This script is a PowerShell script that runs either on your Windows DHCP server or from a remote workstation. It can be scheduled and it does the following. It retrieves the DHCP scopes it does an existence verification in PHP IPAM. It creates missing subnets or scopes from the Windows side. It also has a comprehensive logging feature as well as an auditing feature. If you need to run the script again over and over, you can just schedule it. Uh, again, I want to note that you need to run this PowerShell script in at least in administrator mode. For my demo, let me bring up PowerShell so you can see this. The script is very straightforward. Because I have a SSL cert that is self-signed, I have it set to disabled. Also, I have TLS 1.2. It's just for consistency um, to ensure that I'm not using anything else. I could set that to 1.3. And if you look this up, there's different ways to um, run this. Uh, also, I want to point out I'm using um, PHP 5.1. My servers that I'm testing this on our Windows servers 2019 and 2022. Also, my Rocky Linux server is uh, the most recent 9.4. Uh, let's see, did I miss anything there? Uh, no. So, let's begin. There are several pieces that need to be defined in several locations first before we set up a section in PHP IPAM. I am assuming you already watched my video about setting up the API and understand how to do that. I will only be briefly showing you an existing working API uh, set up in this video to conserve time. This script will not work if you don't have a functioning API set up. So, to begin with, I'm going to go to administration and then sections and I'm actually going to add a new section here and I removed the default section and the reason for that is I'll show you real fast in here you see this mode strict mode and it says disables uh, well in it right now it's in strict mode but it disables over if you click no um, it will Disable overlapping subnet checks. Now, what happens through the API if I have subnets that overlap? So, specifically, the original customer's one is 10. Dot something, this will fail, uh, or my API script will fail. So, I deleted the original customer's one. Next, now that we have this section set up, Let's go to subnets and you see the subnet section, the tech guys guide has no subnets in it. Also up here, this is actually the section ID number and I should probably zoom. I don't think I can zoom in. Anyways, it's eight. So that's important because that's a field that you need to know in the API. Next, I did add a neat feature I created in the custom fields what are called the um, least duration 
and the subnet state. Now this is from the actual, and we'll leave that Vericare and we'll just set the size as 12. And then let me grab the other one. And we'll make that 12 as well. So now we have these two custom subnets. And what I'm trying to demonstrate here is um, we can create a API call to these as a custom field. Now I have in Notepad, let's see, we need to define this. So to do the let me bring up notepad. Hopefully that shows up. Yeah, there we go. So in here, we need to define our base. And basically what that is, is we have the section ID. And the section ID, oops, is defined here. That's the section ID. We need the API. So let's go over here. As you can see, I already have it set up. And if you follow the format, you'll see um, there's my server IP, API, PowerShell, that's the app ID, and then here's my token. And then I'm using SSL with that. Okay. So now that we have all that, if I go here, you can see there's no subnets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and Hopefully I can do this. I'm going to squeeze this in so that these two are here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this, right? So let's make sure I have an eight there. I do not. As you can see, the PowerShell script is looks pretty much the same. I'm going to hit run. And you can see something's happening there. And if I go over here, Wow, look at that. It's already dumped all these subnets into the video or into the IPAM settings. And let's bring up the script again. Where did I put that? There it is. And it says it's successfully created. Now that we have all that, and as you can see, there's there's a few fields. Let me see here. So this engineering, you'll see that the one piece that was, you know, added the scan agent as well as enabled the host check. So let's go look at the script more fast and run through that. Hopefully I can zoom this in a little bit for you. Control plus, there we go. There, that should make it easier in the video. So in here, you'll see that it's creating a log function and it's going to the C drive. So if you set that to true, it'll do that. Um, as we move through, I'm converting the um, subnet mask to a CIDR notation. And then this is logging all the API. Now, I don't have a lot of time to go through what each function's doing. I hope it's very descriptive, but basically, that's pretty much it. The big item that you may need is, uh, where was it here? You can set the least duration to false, as you see here. And as you might have noticed, you see the least duration. And so I need to rerun this. And what I would do is I'll set it to true. to demonstrate this feature to you. Oops. And you can change this description um, prefix. Uh, this is for the second half of the script. This is where you would set the scan agent and the ping subnet. And let me show you where that is. So that's these two, the scan agent and the ping subnet. That's the host check. And there's the least duration and subnet state. So if I rerun this, hopefully 
now it shows the subnet state is active. See some are active, inactive, excuse me. It shows the least duration for these. And that's pretty much it. That's uh, what the subnet portion of the script does. Well, I hope this made understanding my script for importing subnets from MS Windows Server and putting them into PHP IPAM a little fun and easy if you have a lot of subnets to put in. Um, also, my script does not delete them. You'll have to manually delete them. Um, and, oh, that was, I wanted to make sure I said that. Finally, I wanted to thank you for watching my video. And as always, please like and subscribe. And if you have some comments of what you liked or what else you'd like me to cover, have a great day. Thank you.